Sheena with Bain Home Gardens. Today we're going to do something that is going to be only the second time that we've done it, but we're going to be official with it this time. Um, we're going to be making bread. My goal is to get to the point in our homesteading journey where I am spending less money at the grocery store and more money investing in our farm our homestead and so small things that we have already eliminated from buying at the grocery store would be uh, jelly relish um, pepper sauces each year I hope to add a few more staple items to that this year at the end of 2021 coming into 2022 I'm planning on adding bread to that list We've invested in a couple of items. My husband bought me a KitchenAid um, as a part of my anniversary present. Um, and then I invested some of some money also into uh, two Pullman pans, a lock and lock to store our bread, um, to keep it fresh for the week, and some KitchenAid attachments and um, some other items that hopefully oh the bread slicer I was searching my brain trying to remember what the other item was bread slicer also these things will make the process of making bread a little less daunting and storing it putting it up the whole process and so if it's easier then the chances of me investing a little time and a little energy into doing it increase so today I'm going to bring you along with me as we make our bread for the week. My goal will be to do this between Friday and Saturday of each week and yeah hopefully one loaf will be enough to last us a week. We had actually gotten to the point where we've reduced the amount of bread that we eat a lot because we noticed that the shelf life has gotten worse. I don't know what's happening with the quality of products with COVID but I digress. So I'm going to turn you around to the KitchenAid as I just go through the process and so that my family doesn't have to sit all still and quiet while I'm working on this, I will um, come back and just record over with a voiceover just telling you the different steps. We're going to be using a recipe by the Needy Homesteader. Um, I will link that video in the description so you can go over to her also if you would like very good content on her channel. I did forget to mention that I am going to have um, the video playing. I'm going to make the bread along with the Needy Homesteader. So just bear with me and my pauses and all of that good jazz as I watched the video. The first time I made the bread, I did it that way and it came out great. The only thing is I did not have my Pullman pans at the time or my bread cutter slicer. So now I'm like all official, I'm so excited. Okay, we're gonna start out with one and a half cups of warm water. To our warm water, we're going to add some active dry yeast. We're going to use two tablespoons. Now I'm just going to raise my bowl and give this a nice good blend. I did however forget to add the sugar. did add some sugar to my yeast and water just to give it something to feed off on to make sure it's active and we see bubbles that means that it is so we'll continue the process okay now we're going to add one fourth cup of honey you could also use about a third cup of sugar
Okay, so here's where my recipe deviates a little bit. I used one and a half cups of scalded milk, cooled down, instead of using one fourth cup of powdered milk. I believe later on that's what led to some of the tackiness and eventually as you'll see in the final reveal of the bread a little bit more denseness but that's to be seen. Okay next we're going to add one fourth cup of instant potato flakes. This will help to soften the wheat bread make it a little bit easier to work with. Okay, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. I did add two cups of white whole wheat flour and two tablespoons of softened butter. To that, you just saw me add one and a half teaspoons of sea salt. I use pink Himalayan. And now we're going to go ahead and add two farm fresh eggs okay so now I'm just gonna start mixing on a level 2 on the KitchenAid I went ahead and scooped most of my flour into a bowl and then I used a half cup measure to add the flour to the mixture as it blends now the recipe says that you could use anywhere from two and a half to four cups of flour for this recipe but remember I have extra liquid in this recipe so I used five and a half cups of flour. The flour that I'm adding to the mixture is white flour, all-purpose white flour. Even though this is sped up, I really started to feel sorry for the KitchenAid after a while because it took a minute for it to get to the point where it was forming an actual dough ball. But once it did, right here, we're at that point and this is when I started my time for kneading, my five minutes. Okay, finally we are there. I do notice that this is a lot tackier than the white bread recipe that I've done in the past. And according to the recipe, that is going to be the case. So yeah, you can see there's even just a little bit of residue left in the bowl. So now I'm just gonna work um, on a lightly floured surface and just knead this a little bit. I think the recipe said 12 to 14 times. I did not do that. That also could be a contributing factor to some of my results 
I skipped that part of the recipe accidentally, but next time I will definitely be sure to incorporate that. Excuse the dog in the background. Okay, so there you just saw me pinching the bottom up. I'm trying to get a nice um, ball formed so that I can put it into the bowl and it can rise. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and put some olive oil in there, shake it around, twist it about. And to this bowl, I'm going to put our dough ball in. I'm just trying to shape it up just a tad bit more to make sure it's nice and round and pretty. This is really fun. Like it's a really nice way to work out some of your frustrations on the day. But also bread making is very relaxing. I, I really do like it. All right, so now I wanna coat one side and then I'm just gonna flip it, coat the other side real good with the olive oil. And because this bowl is a little tacky, I'm just gonna spread the remaining olive oil with my hands on the sides of the bowl so that as the dough ball rises, it won't stick. I preheated my oven to 170, cut it off, and then I put my bowl in with a towel over the top, let it sit for an hour, and this was the result. Now I'm just gonna punch it down, punch it down. This this is such a rewarding feeling right here. Like, boom, I love it. I don't know why. And now we're just gonna repeat that process all over again. I'm just going to roll it back up into a nice ball and then put it back in the bowl. Hopefully there's still enough oil there from the first time. And we're gonna let it rise this time instead of for an hour, we're only gonna do a half hour. And there wasn't enough oil as you can see, so I added a little bit more. Same technique. Okay, punching it down again. This time we're ready to roll out our dough and make our actual loaves. So I did add extra flour to this recipe and I think this was a big recipe anyway. So I'm going to need to divide this flour out some. So I took off about a third of it. I'm gonna put that in my Moonfish Pullman pan and this will go here. Now on this pan, I've already used uh, some Crisco and I've oiled the sides of the pan. I was really nervous, afraid it was gonna stick. It's my first time using the Pullman pans. So I, even though it's supposed to be non-stick, I just didn't know, so I did it. I won't have to do it again. I feel more confident. The sides, tucking the sides is important. Um, push in. Get a, the sides tucked in really well and then pinch. And then I'm just gonna continue the process of rolling this into a nice even loaf, making sure the bottom is nice and pinched off and closed. Okay, there you go. But you notice the gaps there, we don't want that so i'm just gonna press down show the dough where to go so to speak try not to leave any air gaps and you should want it to look something like that all right i forgot to well my other pan so i'm just doing that with a stick of crisco and i'm gonna use the same techniques with this one Okay, now that we have both of our loaves prepared, I'm just going to apply the lid to both of them. 
Um, my husband was cooking on one side of the stove, so I just set these on the opposite side of the stove where it was nice and warm. And we're gonna let these sit for about 30 to 45 minutes. Now, I checked them at 30 minutes, and as you can see, it has risen quite a bit. Stand to rise a little bit more. So I did let them go for another 30 minutes. Looking back, I wish that I would have allowed this to rise for probably another 30 minutes. I recognize it's all based on your humidity and things like that in your house. And I'm just not sure why this one just didn't rise very much at all. Maybe it's the difference in the pan. I'm not sure. But it may take a couple of tries to figure this out. Okay, so next I took two tablespoons of sugar and mixed with water, basted the bread with it, and then sprinkled those rolled oats on the top. And then cooked that in a 400 degree oven for about 35 minutes. Now, one thing I wish I would have done differently here is put maybe some foil on the counter. I didn't expect, yeah, I didn't expect all of those rolled oats to come off. Well, as many that did. And I'm just going to go ahead and flip it back over onto the cooling rack. It's so beautiful. And the smell. Oh my goodness, guys, the smell is amazing. Okay, I'm just going to do the same exact technique with our other load. A trick to tell whether or not it's done all the way through is to just give it a thump or a flick and you'll hear like this hollow sound that is a good indication that your bread is done. Alternatively, you could check the internal temperature of the bread and if it falls between 180 and 190 degrees, your bread should also be at a very good cooking point. Your bread is done. The bread is done. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so excited, but I am tired. I'm going to bed. I'll see you in the morning. It's the next morning and I just have to say the house smelled absolutely amazing last night as that bread was cooking and even for hours after it was done oh my gosh it smelled just like a bakery in here like the smell alone could just make you gain weight it was phenomenal but I was too tired to wait for the bread to cool um, because it's suggested to cut it after it's cool so we're going to do that this morning i'm going to show you what it looks like and then i'm going to get out our bread cutter or slicer however you want to say it bread cutter bread slicer same difference um and we're going to use it to slice our longer loaf so let's see what it looks like Okay, so this is our bread cutter. It came in this nice little, um, well, this nice little bag came with it to store it in. After that first loaf of bread that I made that I was really excited about, I did so poorly with cutting it that I immediately knew I was gonna have to have some help. There's no way that my family's gonna be able to eat sandwiches off of this unevenly cut bread. So I already knew that I was gonna need some type of help. And then after watching the Needy Homesteaders video 
and seeing this device, I went onto Amazon and found it. All right, let's get it set up. This is, of course, my first time using it. Okay. Now, it may not be easy to see in the video, but there are different sizes. This, if I use this end to cut, then my slices are going to be wider, like that. Okay? If I use this end to cut, then my slices are going to be more narrow, like that. So, I want to stick with this size. I'm not exactly sure how to work that out as... Um, it does have a bar on the end, so it's not like you can just slot it in and out. So, I guess we will figure this out together. Another nice feature about this is it comes with a knife, bread knife. Take that off. Um, we wiped this down already. Yeah, so bread knife and two magnets to hold it in place which is really neato and a nice little accessory for people that are clumsy like myself okay so this loaf is a tad bit longer than our device hmm I wonder if I'm doing this right to the bread here for a second. Nope, that's not right. Okay, yeah, I was doing it right. <laughs> okay. Alright, so I'll just sit it on top there. Okay, instead of sitting it inside, as maybe a smaller loaf would go, I'm going to sit it right on top. Do, 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 do. Just like that. And I guess maybe after I cut the end slices off, we may be able to fit it down in there a little bit more securely. And then we can use a little backer here. The moment I've been waiting for. Okay, so I'm going to hold it steady since there's no support with it being up top. That's our whole wheat bread. Oh my gosh. I am loving the texture. Okay. Still won't quite fit in. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And then I'm going to cut off this other end piece here. Now we are on the wide setting. Wow. Oh my gosh, the smell. Whew. This is amazing. Oh, I didn't cut the actual bottom. Oof. Okay, now I should be able, now those two pieces, those end pieces, rest assured, they will be used. We had some friends a long time ago start calling that end of the bread the, the, the butt bread, call this the butt bread. We like the butt bread. <laughs> All right, so this should go a little bit smoother now. So let's see how it goes. 
turn so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. feel like I am doing something terribly wrong here. So There we go. That's a slice of bread. I am a little unsure as to what I'm doing wrong because I'm, I may have this set up improperly. So let me go look at a video or something to figure this out. I'll be right back. User error is a serious thing, guys. Okay, so before I even got to the videos, I was able to figure it out. And I wish I would have left the camera on so you guys could have seen with me, but I'm going to show you again. I just have it set up backwards is the only issue. So when I unfolded it, just this is how it stores. I just went boom, boom. And I thought, you know, that's a little loose. I thought maybe I had a poor quality product. No, this is user error. So what actually I should have done is went this way. And then those, boom, they don't move. And look, you've got a nice little table. So, yeah, I'm going to blame that on the fact that I've only had a few sips of my coffee. All right. I still want the narrow end. So I'm going to turn it this way. But that's the thing about life. We don't always get it <laughs> the first time, do we? And it's nice to be able to have do-overs when do-overs are possible. And in this case, it is. So I am thankful for that. All right. So I've kind of already messed up my slicing a little bit. But I'm going to see if I can, you know, save it a little bit. So I'm going to put this in here. There we go. So I'm gonna have another larger slice, which is fine. That'll be great for some toast this morning. And then I'm just gonna slice. Get it in the right spot. And that is a slice of bread oh, gosh okay so I'm even more excited now that I actually have this thing right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep slicing and then I'm gonna try to get this transferred into our lock and lock which we got for storage and I'm more than likely just gonna speed this along for you guys <laughs> stop there um because I now I need to advance the bread a little bit more so I can stay within the size that I want it to stay in so what I'm going to do is get my lock and lock out and it's right behind you took it took the packaging off as well and wiped it down earlier and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these end slices here And then I'm going to follow with the slices I've already cut. Okay. This uh, is one of the storage ideas that I saw that I really liked. Um, this just pops on. And you just lock all the sides. And 
that's it simple as that and I don't know what kind of there's several things that are a mystery to me right now that I'm dying to see how it's gonna go first I am interested to see how the family takes to this bread what notes they're gonna give me about things that they like that they dislike um, because my family is very vocal to me about their likes and dislikes when it comes to food so and I appreciate that because I can improve or I can get things more to their liking and isn't that the goal when you're homesteading to be cater catering to your home um, so yeah it'll be interesting to see if this bread lasts the whole week if it lasts longer if they like it if they don't it'll be interesting to see if I even like it when I get finished slicing here I'm actually gonna do a taste test with you guys so I'm going to continue slicing and packaging and I will be back when I'm ready to taste test I thought it might be a good idea just real quick to show you how to advance or how I'm advancing the bread in order to stay within the slice dimensions that I want so here's our little board that's movable I'm just gonna pull the bread up and I'm gonna advance the little support Maybe I need to go up a little bit more yeah that's good and then I'm just gonna continue slicing okay we have our bread all cut up and I'm so happy that I invested in that bread slicer it is amazing and it made me seem like I knew what I was doing after I knew what I was doing you get my drift oh man again cutting this bread makes me feel wonderful it's like I'm a bread lover so this is something I should have already been doing years ago but better late than never right so I'm gonna get a slice um, buttered and toasted up and I'm gonna try it with you guys and let you know what I think now this is our whole wheat bread next week I'll be doing an all white bread and I'm pretty sure the family's gonna like the the white bread more because they tend to lean towards white bread I tend to lean towards the wheat bread so um, I also know that there was a lot of modifications that I made with this particular recipe um, just get a plate here I did not use powdered milk instead I used scalded milk as I mentioned earlier and that caused me to have a little bit more tackiness when it came to rolling the dough which I believe led to a little bit of a denser bread but um, in the future I probably will just use the powdered milk until this point I haven't really had a reason to have it in stock so that's something that we'll be including into our grocery budget um, starting today so if there is a off taste or texture or anything it's probably going to be due to that there's the dryer um, so yeah so let me just get a slice here got my slice of toast put the lock and lock back on and I do know when it comes to storing bread you don't want a very humid area that will just lead to mold so keep your bread in a cool location so that you know it will get the best shelf life possible our house stays pretty cool so I think right here on the counter with everything else should be good for it Okay, got a little butter butter. Now, do you put your butter on your toast before or after you toast it? <laughs> Some people toast the, the butter, then spread. Um, no, you don't toast the butter. I need more coffee I really do <laughs> some people toast the bread 
and then add the butter. Some people add the butter and then toast the bread. What do you do? You ain't got enough butter on there? No, I love butter. It's bad. Okay, I'm gonna get this in the toaster and I'll be right back. Mm. Almost got it too toasty. So as I mentioned before, we've eliminated buying jams and jellies from the store anymore. Today I'm going to be trying our, what is this, apple pie jam on this homemade bread turned buttery toast. For the moment of truth, hmm. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. I think it's doing something crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all. I wish you could have some. Mm -hmm. That is on point. scramble some eggs and have a second piece of toast. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey as I experiment with new products, experiment with new recipes, and increase our sustainability as a family, as a farm, as homesteaders. One last thing, right? One last thing you have to purchase from the grocery store. Feels good. Thanks for coming along with me. This is Sheena. I hope you have a great week.